the past and present volunteers, I remembered the writer to the letter to the Hebrews, the reading of today's scripture that Bill Dempsey did for us, where a whole chapter was spent listing people of faith from Old Testament times. And in that chapter, it says, by faith, Abel offered God a more acceptable sacrifice. By faith, Enoch was taken up. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen. By faith, Abraham, he obeyed when he was called. By faith, Sarah herself was able to give the gift of conception. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessing on Esau and Jacob. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid for three months by his parents. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called Pharaoh's son. By faith, he left Egypt. By faith, he kept the Passover. By faith, people crossed the Red Sea. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish at Jericho. And on and on the chapter goes. That list of 10 names from Israel's prehistory was just the barest beginning for the writer of the Hebrews. They go on to say, what more should I say? Time would fail for me to tell about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, David and Samuel and the prophets, they, those who conquered kingdoms and enforced justice and received promises. And the chapter goes on and on with names. And with all those faithful folk in mind and more, we went on to read what Bill, Bill Dempsey read for us today, these words. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God at the throne in heaven. Every time we gather to worship, we are reminded we are not alone here. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, past people in the Bible, past people in our history as a church, and past perhaps because they moved away or because they up and died on us. But nevertheless, we are still surrounded by them. And not only that, we're here together. We've added ourselves into that list of witnesses, the present witnesses. I invite you again, look at that list of names in your bulletin insert. Take it home with you and, and just think of the stories you have connected to so many of those people. It's a roster of your sisters and brothers engaged in ministry right alongside you, except that they show up behind the scenes and out of the, out of the spotlight. Now, Kat Tomaszewski back there on the organ bench, she who directs our choir and accompanies us is one of the seven paid staff people also. And I, your minister, we tend to hog the spotlight. Everything is about us, right, Kat? <laughs> We're performers, right? We're, we are the public face of this place, along with Jerry LaCrosse, our church office, who's also the receptionist. And I, I say she's the first person that people meet when they come into our building. So it's a very good first impression that we have in our front office. And those are three employees, if you're interested. Our other four employees are Denise Fusina. She's the treasurer and bookkeeper. She receives our money. She keeps the records. She pays the bills. She files the financial reports. We have Shelby Sexton, who right now is in the back with Marilyn Kettler, covering our child care for Sunday morning worship. She comes in at 9.30, so before choir practice, if you have kids, you can join the choir and she'll take care of them. And she stays until 11.30 for families with little kids after the story time is over. We also have Jeffrey Minda, who coordinates and leads our Wacky Wednesday Kids Fun Club. And we have Mike Lamar, our custodian, who keeps all things ship shape and shining. Those are our seven paid people. And all of them except me are part time. They rely on more than 70 volunteers to actually get things done here. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, past and present people from the Bible, people from our church history, and people who are seated right beside you in these church pews. We are in this thing together. We can lean on each other. We can draw inspiration from one another. We can trust the saints of our past and the saints of today to have our back in times of trouble and to cheer us on in our future successes. We are surrounded 
We are not alone here. And not only that, we are with Jesus, who's called the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Jesus, the pioneer, makes me think of westerns and Conestoga wagons, you know, going across those prairies and across those mountains, un untouched new territory. He's a pioneer because he goes ahead of us. He goes into new areas, unfamiliar territory, and he invites us to follow along. He's the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. The perfecter. My computer's spell check does not recognize perfecter as a word. So I guess it simply means Jesus is the one who knows the way and shows the way. He's the one who inspires us to follow and resources us along the journey as we mature. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith is the one whose role model of faith and endurance provides us an example that we can emulate. Jesus, as we meet him in the Gospels, serves to, as a measure of what it means for us to be mature in faith. Laying aside every weight, of sin that clings so closely, keeps us bound, we step out in faith. We step out trusting ourselves to the one who has run the race ahead of us, who's persevered against all the odds, who endured even the shame and the pain and the death and the cross, so that he now is seated at God's right hand in glory. Yes, Jesus Christ himself is in that surrounding cloud of witnesses. In and among all the saints we have named, Jesus Christ is there, alive and well within them and within us cheering for us. Jesus is cheering for you as you persevere in the race that is set for you. Dolly Zeller sent me a story way back in May of 2014. And it was entitled, Why Go to Church? Apparently a, a churchgoer wrote a letter to the editor in the newspaper and complained, it makes no sense to go to church every Sunday. I've gone for 30 years now, he wrote. And in that time, I've heard something like 3,000 sermons. But for the life of me, I can't remember a single one of them. So I think I'm wasting my time, and the pastors are wasting theirs by giving sermons at all. Well, this started a real controversy in the letters to the editor column, much to the delight of the editor. And it went on for weeks until somebody finally wrote this, and I quote, I've been married for 30 years now, in that time, my wife has cooked some 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu for a single one of those meals. But I do know this, they all nourished me. They gave me strength that I needed to do my work. If my wife had not given me these meals, I would be physically dead today. Likewise, if I had not gone to church for nourishment, I would be spiritually dead today. When you are down to nothing, wrote Dolly Zeller to me in that email three years ago. When you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Faith sees the invisible. Faith believes the incredible and receives the impossible. Thank God for our physical and our spiritual nourishment. And I thank Dolly for sharing those encouraging words to me and to all of us. The first church, Alpina. You have a record of 155 years of ministry with a roster of saints that includes movers and shakers from every generation and walk of life here in Northeast Michigan. You gathered here today are today's congregation, carrying not only the weight of the past, but the glory of the past and the resources from our past drawing on resources from our history and your own personal stories as you gather and bring yourselves to the table. So put it to good use, volunteers and colleagues. Invest your time, invest your talents, invest your treasure to make our church Jesus' church for today and for tomorrow. That long list of volunteers in your hands is just the starting roster of a great team that's designed for a glorious future. May you be blessed along the way, blessed with my personal gratitude for all you do and all you have done, including the choir who is not listed, of whom I'm one volunteer. I know I'm not paid to sing in the choir. I do that voluntarily. You're also to be blessed in the name of the one who goes before you, the one we all follow together, Jesus Christ, 
who is the head of the church, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. 